Quincy Vadreen. And I'm Brittany Newsom. We're with the LSU Ag Center, and today we're going to be talking about food preservation. We're not only going to tell you how to preserve food safely for your family and friends at home, but also if you would like to produce some value-added products, you can do this using some standardized recipes and the proper equipment and also the right methods. So Brittany, we'll start talking about the different equipment we have here. First, we'll talk about the jars, okay? There's three different standard sizes. Mm -hmm. We've got the half pints here. These are commonly used for jams and jellies. Um, also with value added products, this is a good size for salsas. Um, this is your pint. A lot, a lot of people put pickles and chow chow in the, the pint size drawers. And then we are pressure canning fresh fruits and vegetables, we've got the quart size jars. So these are just the standard sizes. And then we have our two piece vacuum lids or the lids and the bands. The lids have a gasket around them that is the sealant on it. When we use them, we'll use this little handy grabber, put them on there and uh, tighten the lid. Just, we call it fingertip tight, not over tighten it because you want to let the air release and let that um, gasket expand and seal correctly. You want to have on hands a good pair of hot pads or pot holders to make sure, you know, when you're handling the hot uh, equipment and also the hot jars. We have these uh, vinyl coated uh, jar grabbers. This is one of the things you kind of have to get proficient in using <laughs> to be able to grab your jars or pick them up. You can either do that in the canner or you can use things like um, the basket here. This basket would actually go in what we have here is a water bath canner and you would put your jars in here like so. You could fit about um, probably six of these half pints and a four or five of those uh, pints and then lower it down into the water bath canner like so. Little gadgets we have here, this is a jar wrench or jar tightener. Like I said, you don't wanna do it too tight, but this is kinda of helpful when your lids and your jars are, are kinda of hot. Then you have the magnetic lid grabber like we saw before. And then this is what they call a bubble popper or headspace measure, okay. okay? So bubble popping means when you are uh, filling your jars, you wanna make sure you get rid of the air bubbles. Some people used to use a butter knife or you know something metal, and that can actually damage the jars. Your standardized recipes that you're required to use will have you know how much headspace to allow in each different type of product. So I talked a little bit about the water bath canner. Um, this is just hot, water boiling or simmering water that will um, what we call process. Mm -hmm. So to properly can our produce, um, the low acid produce, we need a pressure canner. This would be the proper equipment to use. And um, the pressure canners come in different sizes. This is uh, the 23 quart, this is the 16 quart. You cannot use a pressure cooker to can low acid foods. So make sure you have a pressure canner. And different parts on the pressure canner are as follows. This is the dial gauge, and this measures the pounds per square inch, and that's the PSI. And then you have the vent pipe under here, and this is the regulator gauge, okay? You're gonna let the vent pipe make sure it's always clear. You can look underneath to tell. Make sure it's clear, okay? And then you also have the ceiling ring. A lot of times if you have an older unit and you're not sure how old it is or if it's safe to use, the first thing I would check is that ceiling ring because they do get dry rotted if they've sat up and been in storage for a while. Is it also important to check out your actual gauge to see, make sure that it works correctly? Yes, that's a great, great point to make because our local extension offices can test your uh, pressure canner gauges for you. And this, um, in the bottom, we also have a canner or cooker cooking rack. This provides a little bit of space between the jars and the bottom of the pot because you don't want your jars to sit directly on the bottom of the pot. 